in section 10.1, we gained a little bit of understanding of how hypothesis testing works and some language pieces along with that, such as how to write your null and alternative hypotheses, how to write your conclusion, and very importantly, what type 1 and type 2 errors are and the fallout thereof. So in section 10.2, we're actually going to run our first hypothesis tests, and we're going to run them for a population proportion, which means that our parameter in this section is going to be P, the population proportion. Now remember, never lose sight of the two main methods and ideas behind hypothesis testing. First of all, we're always trying to prove the alternative. And statistical significance, that term means that the observed results were very unlikely due to random chance. And so we reject the null hypothesis. In other words, the probability of a fluke, huh? observed results by random chance, the probability of a fluke was too low. So we reject the null hypothesis. Statistical significance means getting to reject the null hypothesis. We better make a couple notes. There. When the probability of the fluke is too low, we will reject H0, and that will be statistically significant for us. Statistical significance means rejecting the null hypothesis because our claim is always in the H1, right? The null hypothesis is always the status quo, and the alternative hypothesis is always our claim. It's always what we're trying to prove. So it's statistically significant if we can reject what we thought to be true and go with our claim that we're hoping will be true. All right, now what were the evidence types that you could have for this? Well, remember with our rigged die, you can have your classical method, which is when your result is far away from what was expected, right, from the rest of the group. In other words, you have a large z-score. All right, so that's what I mean by this, right, too many standard deviations away, large z-score. And again, we're not going to use this method, right? There, there's as much as we're going to see about it. If your z-score is really big, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. We kind of were doing that along the way in the course when we kept saying, yes, this is unusual. It's unusual because it's far away. It's more than two standard deviations away from the mean. That's what we were talking about. The method we are going to use is the p-value method, which is the probability of a fluke, right? So if the probability of the result by random chance which is a fluke is so low that we reject H0 and we decide that the parameter is wrong instead. The parameter or it's mean we reject that it's a fluke and say it must be that the parameter is wrong. The parameter that was assumed to be true in H0. Right? All right, so keep in mind that's the definition of what a p value is. P stands for probability. So the p value is the probability of obtaining that sample result or something even more extreme, something even closer to the tails, or farther out into the tails, I should say, by random chance, right? By random chance if the null hypothesis was true. So if what you assume to be is true is the null hypothesis and your result is so far out there, then you think nah, maybe the null hypothesis is not true. And you reject that null hypothesis. So for example, we thought our dice were fair and then we got a result that was so extreme, the p-value was so low that we rejected that the dice were fair. The p-value approach, the second approach, is what we tend to use more frequently. Um, it's what is used by computers and calculators, research journals, etc. So it tends to be the one we are more interested in looking at. If you want to see about the classical method, if that interests you, you're more than welcome to look at it in the online textbook. It's available there. But always remember that the p-value, which is the way we are going to work most of the time, we reject when our results are very unlikely, and that very unlikely will be when the p-value is very low. If your p-value is extremely low, then you will reject H0. Right? 
So if the p-value is low, how low? Lower than alpha. The probability of the type 1 error, we reject H0. So in other words, the p-value is saying, hey, that's the fluke option, right? Remember the fluke. So that p-value is the probability of it being a fluke. It could happen, but if it's low enough, you say, no, I don't think that's what's going on. I think I need to reject H0. I think the parameter's wrong instead. You're basically making a choice between fluke and parameter wrong. That's what you're doing when you do a hypothe an hypothesis test, which we will see in the next video.